make a test.
ahead and get started. Um, give me one second. Let's see in Discord, can I change which camera I'm using? Oop, and that broke OBS. Um, okay, let me try restarting the camera really fast. No. Um, okay, well, uh, people on Twitch are going to see my face in weird colors. People on the stream won't see anything, um, but that is okay. Um, we'll just cut right into to things with the, uh, with the, the stream. Um, so if you're watching on Twitch, uh, you, I'm hosting this workshop in the Discord. Um, so feel free to, if you're already in the Discord, just jump in the live stream beginner workshop. There's a chat. Um, you can ask questions in there. Um, and if you are on the Discord, we have it set to uh, voice activity so that I don't get everyone's like keyboard clacking sounds and um, and like feedback. But if you turn your Discord settings to voice activity, then you can ask uh, voice questions as well if you want to. So with that in mind, <clears throat> uh, I will go ahead and pull up both chats on the side of my screen, and then we can dive into things and talk mm -hmm. about making our first video game. Is there a way to see the chat? There we go. Um, so we can talk about, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about making our first video game. So we're going to be using some software called Construct 3. Um, and the first thing that you need to do to, to follow along with this workshop is head to the, the website, um, and it's going to be editor.construct, C-O-N-S-T-R-U-C-T dot net. And you'll get a page that looks like this. Um, and I'll just click no thanks, uh, start now. So <clears throat> it's a totally free program. Um, there are some pro features or something that you can pay for. And if you need any of those during code day, um, post a message and help desk and we'll give you a coupon for a free one for the weekend. Because uh, we have the ability to give out some time limited coupon codes for free stuff. But the regular version is fine for most people. The free version just sort of comes with uh, some limits on how, compli how complex your game can be. Um, we're going to be using the software called Construct 3. Um, and basically, our goal is going to be to try to make a game in, I don't know, like 30 minutes. Um, and I don't just mean like, you know, the what you'd normally get in like a high school class or something where it's like, you know, you learn the basics of for loops or whatever they, they tell you. Like, we're going to try to actually make something that's fun. Um, and that people will enjoy playing. And I'm not going to say it's going to be the world's most beautiful game or the world's most complicated game, um, but we will try to make something that's relatively good and is recognizable as a game. Um, and we'll try to do that pretty quickly. So um, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, again, if you're following along, and you should be, um, open your web browser to editor.construct.net. And again, if you have any questions, post them in the chat. I have it open, um, or you can use voice activity on Discord. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, I'm going to click New Project, and I'm just going to give our project a name. Now, the first thing that any game needs is some sort of, um, you know, like a, a plot, like, you know, something that you're striving for. Um, and we're going to need to decide what our game is about before we actually make it. So here's what I like to, to use for this. Um, I'm assuming you all have probably heard of uh, a guy named uh, Bill Gates. Oh, Bill Gates. There we go. Um, you know, the founder of Microsoft and um, philanthropist trying to eradicate mosquitoes. Um, what you may not have known about is that there's this great video of, uh, of Bill Gates jumping over a chair. Uh, and the, the sound might not work. I'm not totally sure. Um, so we'll see. But this is a real thing that happens. This is Bill Gates is on a news interview. Is it true that you can leap over a chair from a standing position? And Bill Gates replies, it depends on the size of a chair. <laughs> yes! Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Uh, and if you could hear the, uh, the audio, um, it plays, damn, it feels good to be a gangster in the... Uh, in the, the background when it's slow motion. So that's what we're going to build our game about. We're going to build a game about Bill Gates jumping over a chair. Um, and I, I promise you we will find a way to make this fun. So I'm going to name this Bill Gates Chair. 
We'll leave everything else default. I, if you're newer to, to programming and you don't necessarily, you know, you haven't done a lot of this before, sometimes things feel really overwhelming. Um, I'm gonna give you a pro tip, which is that as programmers, a lot of the time we just sort of uh, like hope that the defaults are okay and like kind of ignore things until they become a problem. Uh, Cause there's always lots of things that could, you might want to change and whatever else. And it's like, I don't know what half this stuff does. I don't need to know what half this stuff does. Um, if I did, I, my first thing would to do would be to probably just read the text and guess at what it does. Like, I don't know what optimized for pixel art means, but um, you know, I don't know, I don't know what it does for the code, but if I'm making pixel art, I'd probably check it. Like it, you know, it can't hurt. Um, so I'm gonna leave all this as is, and if we need to change anything later, we'll come back to it. So I'll give it a name, click Create, and we are over here with this screen. Um, now on the left-hand side of the screen, there's a bunch of stuff, and again, when we, whenever we see a bunch of stuff, like my first instinct is to just ignore it until we need it, so we'll come back to it later. Um, this middle area is our, um, our map, right? This is our world map. Um, this is where all of this stuff lives and where our character moves around and whatever else. So that's where we're going to do all of that thing. And on our right hand side, um, this is the collection of things in the universe, like things that exist. Um, th there's some nuance to that and we'll get to that in a second. But the, the right hand side is where we would actually put some of the, you know, the things that exist. So. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that exist in this universe? Well, you know, and if I was doing this workshop in an in-person code day, I'd ask people to, to try to brainstorm some things. Um, so if, if anyone wants to type in the chat or something like that, like what are some things that you think would exist in this universe? Mm. Cool. So one thing that would definitely exist in this universe is Bill Gates, right? Like, he's part of this universe. Now, the way that we add things to this world map, um, the way that I like to do it, because I think it, it's less confusing this way, is to go over here to this right-hand side where we have our universe of stuff, and we see object types, and I'm gonna right-click on it and click add a new object type. Now, I'm gonna scroll down in this list and click Sprite and then I'm going to give it a name. Now, why are we picking Sprite? I mean, the answer is, I don't know. Uh, someone a long time ago decided that most things in video games were probably gonna be Sprites, um, and I don't know where the term Sprite comes from. Maybe someone's really into soda, um, but it's, it's called a Sprite, and so we're gonna pick Sprite from this list, and we're gonna name it Bill Gates, right? Um, so again, Whenever you want to create something in Construct 3, whenever you want to create something that needs to exist in the world, we right click on object types, we click add a new object type, we scroll down and find sprite, and we give it a name. I don't know if it allows spaces, so I'm just not going to use them. Okay, and then I'm going to click insert. Uh, now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click somewhere to put an initial version of it on the map, just the yeah, just the the first version, so that we can kind of you know we can we can see what's out there. And then it's going to open up this little paint program. Now if I wanted to, I could click this button and load an image from uh, a file. So if you're an artist or you're doing a code day project and you've recruited an artist for your team. Um, they can make their art in whatever program they're familiar with, and you can load it into your game with this. But um, this is also a fully featured image editor, and it's not going to pr produce the world's greatest looking images, but you know, it's um, it, it'll it'll do something for us. So I'm going to draw my best job at Bill Gates, and if you're following along, um, I hope that you will as well. So I'm going to do this. Is going to be a Bill Gates head. And give him some big glasses here. And I'll give him a mouth. Cool. 
that is our Bill Gates. Um, and uh, you know, again, if you're following along at home, uh, feel free to draw your Bill Gates however you want. It doesn't have to be Bill Gates. Um, and again, if you want to, you could even find a photo of Bill Gates online. Uh, and you could just use the open button. Now the other thing uh, that I want you to remember to do, and you'll get weird errors if you don't do this, and you'll be like, why is this going on? And if you post in Help Desk, we'll help you. Um, but if you are newer to this and you don't know what's going on, it's, you're just going to be confused. What you need to do is click this button right up here. This little crop icon, if you're familiar with like photography or anything like that, we're going to click this. It's just going to remove you can see it, it made this square you know, as close as possible to the actual face. And that, that's just going to prevent some problems later. Um, one of the things that, that we'll learn with this, uh, this project is that computers are really dumb. Um, and they're, they're not, you know, they're just not smart. Like they don't really do anything um, that you think that they would, they would do. Um, I'm going to have some soda while I'm drinking this, or while I'm uh, doing this. So computers are really dumb. And uh, if we hadn't removed that border, it would have considered all of that empty area around Bill Gates to be part of Bill Gates, which just doesn't make sense. Bill Gates is the head. It's not like the empty area around the head. He doesn't have like an invisible aura. So I don't know. Um, I'm going to close out of this now. And now we have our Bill Gates on the canvas. And I can drag him around, and I can you know, resize him and whatever else. What are the other objects that are in this world that we need to create? I, I always think it's a good way, good way to start is to just create all the objects. So I'm going to go back over here into like our types of objects. I'm going to click Add New Object Type. Now remember, what is everything in a um, game? Pretty much everything in a game. Until you know it's it's not this, it probably is this, and the answer is Sprite. Now, what are some of the other things? Well, a chair is one of them, right? Because we're going to have Bill Gates jumping over a chair. So I'm going to do the same thing. I created that new object type. I click to place our initial one. You know, I'm going to draw my best version of a chair. You know, it's that's not great. You know, maybe we want to do a 3D chair or something like that. Um, yes, perfect. This is great. OK. Uh, and again, remember, we're going to want to click this button just good good practice to always click that button. It'll it'll fix a lot of problems for you. Cool. So we get our chair. I can drag it around. And I can run our game by clicking this play button up here. You know, just like uh, watching a movie or something, you click play. I don't know why it's always a sideways triangle. And you can see here's our game. You know, if I hit the arrow keys, nothing really happens. <laughs> You know, it's not really a game yet. So now we're going to start into how we actually turn this from a image into something that we can actually play. And the way that I'm going to do that is uh, there, there's two different ways that we can do it. The simple way and the way that we're going to start off with is through these things called behaviors. Now, also, I already told you a few of the tricks to being a professional programmer. One of them is just to ignore things where you, where you don't know what they mean until you need them. Um, because there are a lot of things you could learn, but you don't need to learn most of them. And uh, like that's just part of being a programmer is you just ignore things um, until you you know until you need to not ignore them. Um, another thing I taught you about being a programmer is that the computers are dumb, and we need to you know sort of account for the fact that they're not really going to do what we want them to do. They're going to do exactly what we say and nothing more. A third thing I want you to remember about programmers is that we're really lazy, right? Um, we don't really want to do anything that we don't have to. Like, we don't want to do any work that we don't have to do. Um, and so the way that we do that with, uh, co with Construct, and we'll, we do this in, in a lot of like really professional uh, games as well, is we sort of group things together that are really common, um, and we allow them to be reused across projects. So what do I mean when I say really common? I mean, like, how many games have you played where you, you use the arrow keys and you move your player around, right? How many games have you played where you move the mouse and it, you know, if it's a 3D game, it like you look around, right? How many games, if you have a VR headset, have you played where you, you, you move your head and the VR headset, you know, tracks that and then the, the game character moves its head? 
Um, how many games have you played where there's collision with the ground, right? That like all of these things are super, super common. And if you go to the average in, like intro to programming class, they'll teach you to implement all of those. But when it comes down to it, like most of the time as programmers, we don't want to do that. Uh, we're pretty lazy. And so uh, in order to be lazy in this case, um, the people who made Construct 3 have very graciously added a bunch of uh, what they call behaviors to allow us to be really lazy. So uh, let, let's jump back into things. I'm going to go over here to this right hand side. I'm going to find my object type of Bill Gates. And I'm going to right click on him, two finger click if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to click edit behaviors. And behaviors is constructs word for those things that allow us to be lazy, um, the, the sort of reusable bits of stuff that we can use that lots of games have. Now, not everything that you could ever want to do is going to be in here. But a lot of things are going to be in here. Uh, a lot of things that you're going to want to do are going to be in here. So I'm going to click add a behavior from here. And again, if, if you're following along, the way I got there was I, I went over to this right hand side, right click, edit behaviors, add new behavior. And I'm going to pick, scroll down, see what's, what's around here that looks like it could be good. You know, again, I'm going to ignore anything that doesn't look like it's directly relevant to what I want. Um, and I see over here, there's platform. And it says jump and run along platforms, uh, which sounds very relevant because I'm thinking I'm going to make a game where Bill Gates is going to platform around and you know jump on some platforms and jump over the chair. That sounds great. So I'm going to hit add. And that's pretty much it. Um, so if I go ahead and hit start now, we'll see what our game looks like. And well, that wasn't quite as planned. I, you know, it was a little bit more exciting than last time. Uh, where nothing happened, but it's not really a game yet. Now, why did this happen? Well, again, computers are really dumb, and they don't know that we want Bill Gates to stand on the ground, and we didn't add any ground. Um, so, you know, it's it's not going to know about it. So we're going to, to add the ground, I'm going to go over here to this object types area. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to hit add a new object type. Scroll down. Now, almost everything in video games that we're going to be making is a sprite. So I'm going to pick sprite. I'm going to call it ground. Click here. Now, ground, you know, we could just use a, it's it's a block, right? We can resize the block to whatever we want, but it's a block. So I'm going to, I'll pick a color. He's got a nice purple carpet for whatever reason. I just fill it as a box, and then I can go ahead and resize this. So there we go. We, we have got our ground now. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. See if you can make a prediction about what's going to happen. Bill Gates falls through the ground. Why did that happen? Now, in programming, and you've probably heard this before, uh, this is uh, called debugging, right? Like, this is, uh, this is how we you know, go through the process of like trying to figure out what's wrong with their code. Um, one of the things that I've heard is that programming is like 80% uh, debugging and 80% bugging, um, and that it adds up to more than 100% because it always takes longer than you think. Um, a, a lot of the time spent in, in programming is just trying to figure out why the thing you think should work doesn't work. Um, and oftentimes, you'll end up not really feeling like you're doing that much because you're just trying to figure out what's wrong with your code most of the time. And, and to be honest, like that's pretty much how it works. Um, and eventually, you sort of get over that, and, and you start to enjoy figuring out why your code doesn't work, or at least most of the time you do. Um, but that's pretty normal. Because again, remember, computers are really stupid, and they'll only do exactly what we tell them to. And so we have this picture in our head of what we want it to do, but what it actually does is usually not quite the same. So. Anyway, in this case, here's what's wrong with this. We didn't tell uh, the computer, which is dumb and won't do anything we don't tell it to. We didn't tell it that the ground was solid. Now, things being solid is a pretty common thing in games. So we're going to right click over here, and we're going to hit Edit Behaviors, Add New Behavior, and choose Solid. And now that I do that, I now have a game. 
Now, it's not the world's best game. There's no losing conditions, so it's arguably not much of a game at all, but it exists. I can move my character around. We've done this in 20 minutes. Um, let's see what else we can do. Okay, I'm going to move this down a little bit, too, because the chair will be a little more exciting. Now, this is the part where programming starts to open up a little bit, right? You can, you can do a lot more. So what are some of the things that we might want to do? Um, well, for one, we could play around with more behaviors. Like it, sometimes it's fun in, in programming to just see what's out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we'll look through here. I don't know, are any of these interesting? Scroll two, let's try that. And we'll just see what it does. Worst case, we just remove it, right? There's no downside. Look at this, now the camera follows our player. That's great. Um, so that's one thing we can do is we can just kind of play around with things, see, see what's out there, um, you know, uh, just, just give things a try. The other thing that we can do is we can try to add more complex behavior. Now remember I said everything that's easy in a game is over here in this behaviors thing. Everything that's common, everything that's reused, that was pretty easy. You probably don't feel like a professional programmer, right? Like it's not, it, it wasn't super, super complicated. But what if we want to start adding things that are specific to our game? You know, player can stand on solids is pretty common to all games. Player touches a chair and the game restarts is not very common. We do that over here in this event sheet. And you can see right now I'm in layout one, which is like our world map one. If I go over here to event sheet one, this is sort of the, the things that happen um, that are associated with that layout one. Now on the left hand side here, we have what are called conditions. Um, and that, that's sort of saying when X happens, then do Y. And on the right hand side are gonna be actions. That's that, that will, you know, Y, right? I, when I do this at in-person code days, um, I, I usually like to use the example of like, I could say when I touch a chair, then I start screaming, right? When I touch a chair is the event. And when it, then I start screaming is the thing that happens if that event happens, right? It's the action. So the left-hand side would say, when I touch a chair, and the right-hand side would say, I start screaming. So let's go ahead and implement that. I'm going to hit Add Event, and we get this Add Condition. Now remember I said the condition is sort of that when. Here's another common programmer thing, right? Uh, we need to, to we, get, we get the screen, we don't necessarily know what to do. Um, we're just going to pick something, right? Like, we want to say when Bill Gates touches the chair, that's going to be our event, right? Well, what do we want to do? Bill Gates or chair? Like, honestly, I don't know. We'll pick one. Bill Gates. Now, one of the things I like about Construct is it highlights the things that are pretty common. So in here, Bill Gates on collision with chair. So now we get this Bill Gates on collision with chair that's our condition, that's our thing that we're going to be checking for. Now, for our action, that thing that happens when Bill Gates collides with the chair, we want to reset the game. That's the thing that we're going to use as our action. So I'm going to hit Add Action. Now, where do you think that reset the game would be? Again, common programmer thing to need to do, right? Uh, like, we see the screen, we don't know what to pick. Well. It doesn't really make sense for Bill Gates to reset the game because he'd be, you know, he'd just be one thing that's being reset. The chair is certainly not going to reset the game. The ground is not going to reset the game, so it's probably in system. Why is it in system? There's no like, you know, you can't study this in school and know for sure that it's going to be in system because everything that every every programming language or every game making system or whatever else, all of them do things differently. Um, and so part of thinking like a programmer is just kind of guessing sometimes. System sounds like a reasonable place. If we pick the wrong thing, we just go back. Like it's, you know, it's not a big deal. So we'll pick system. And do we see anything in here that helps us restart? Well, I don't see anything right off the top of my head. Like, you know, I don't see anything that looks immediately relevant. So let's just search for restart. And look at this, restart layout. Well, we were in layout one, so that, that kind of makes sense. So I'll pick that. And there are our events. So now I'm gonna go back to layout one. I'll hit play. And when I touch the chair, the 
it restarts. Uh, granted, I can't actually make it over the chair, which is a problem. But I've got this, you know, this pretty basic game. Okay, so uh, we've, we've got a game. Um, we're at uh, 24 minutes. So we've gotten a game in 24 minutes. How can we start to make this fun now? Okay, so first of all, we could add more chairs. Um, I, I mean, we can't make it over one, that's okay, but like, but still, we could add more chairs. So let's go ahead and add another chair. Now we could just right click over here and add new object type and go through that whole process. We pick sprite, you know, we draw the whole thing again, but when you think about it, most chairs are kind of the same, right? And if you went to a factory, they would have like a mold for a chair and they would just produce a ton of them. We can actually do the same thing here because again, programmers are lazy, like we don't want to draw a bunch of chairs. Uh, so what we do is we click and drag and now we have two chairs. And this on collision with chair will actually apply to either of these two. They're exact copies of each other. Um, now they're in different positions, we can actually scale them up and down differently and other things like that, but the, this on collision with chair thing will actually apply to both of them. Um, so pretty neat. Okay, so that's one thing we could do. We could add more chairs. Um, by the way, this isn't specific to chairs. Um, like, you know, we can we can run this, by the way. Like, we'll see. We got two chairs. I was good to run things. We got two chairs. We can't jump over either of them because we're, I don't know, very wimpy jumpers, I guess. Um, we can actually drag out more Bill Gates uh, is, is one of my favorite things to do. And we can make tiny Bill Gates and large build gates. And I'm going to hit hit run. And remember, they're both exact copies of each other, so they'll both have the same behavior, right? I can, uh, I can make them both jump at the same time. They'll both move at the same time as well. Um, that could be a fun mechanic in a game. Like we, you know, we've, we've taken 26 minutes now, and we've gotten a game that could potentially have a fun mechanic of its own, right? Uh, you know, let's start playing around with this a little bit and get a little bit creative. Um, let's drag out another piece of ground, because again, we can do that, same as the chairs. And we will put it there. We'll put some chairs over here. Hit run. And now we have this interesting thing where we can get, maybe we can get Tiny Bill Gates stuck on this platform to, uh, you know, control exactly where he is going to land. And so now we can get him stuck and we can try to get the other build gates up or something. That could be a mechanic that, you know, we've just created a mechanic for a game, potentially. Here are some other fun things we can do. Remember how I told you we would just kind of ignore this stuff on the left hand side until we needed it? Here's something it can do. How do we make build gates jump higher? Well, we can actually do that on this left hand side. Um, this is what's called the properties page. And you can think of a property as, as something that's unique to a particular object. So like, even though all chairs come from the same factory um, and they, they all use the same mold, maybe one of them is red and one of them is blue, right? Or one of them has like a broken leg. Uh, one of them is a little bit, you know, torn. Those are all properties of an, a specific chair, even though they all use the same mold. Um, same here, like, you know, the properties of our chair are like what position it's in, um, things like that. Um, and so we can do the same thing for, for Bill Gates and we can look over here and we have properties like jump strength. So let's give tiny Bill Gates a much bigger jump strength. Let's give him, I don't know, a thousand. And again, you know, part of being a programmer, we can just play around with things. So if this doesn't work, we'll, we'll try something else. Okay, so now we have a game. Okay, there we go. We, we kind of got something going on, right? Um, oh man, I don't know if this is actually possible. Let's see. Um, there's probably a way to make this really like an, into, an, into an interesting mechanic though, but I, I'd have to think more about the level design, right? Um, and maybe we make Bill Gates like accelerates and decelerates really slowly. Um, we'll try like 600. So now Tiny Bill Gates is this super nimble, um, you know, he can just gain on Bill Gates just due to a sheer acceleration alone. 
and now he's able to jump over both of these chairs, or he, he could be if he didn't, you know, die. Um, so, so that would be another mechanic. We can also start playing with this event sheet a little bit more, right? So again, remember, part of being a programmer is just like playing around with things. Um, oh, sorry, missed your, your question, Elena, about uh, duplicating, but I'm glad that you got it. Um, and for anyone else who's wondering, uh, yeah, to duplicate something, you just click and drag. Um, that's why I called this like the, the, the concepts of objects or like the object type, or it's like an object factory, right? It, it produces things from molds. You just drag and drop it and they're all, they're all copies. So I'll go back to our events over here. Um, I'll click add event. And I don't know, let's just pick something. Like we'll, we'll look for something fun. Let's go into system. Um, and let's say every tick. Uh, which I, I think means basically as fast as the computer can possibly do it. What's something that would be fun to do as fast as possible? Well, let's see. What if we spawned more Bill Gates? So wh where would we go to create a new Bill Gates? Like my first thought would actually be in Bill Gates. Um, but there is spawn another object. I think that this won't work. Yeah, I, this actually makes a copy of him at the exact same position, and I only know that because I've done this workshop like a thousand times. But that's always my first guess is spawn another object will work. Um, and when I've actually tried it, I've just found it doesn't work, which is, you know, it's fine. So we'll go back. So it's not in Bill Gates. Well, what about system? And system, we have create object. That sounds like it'll work too. So we'll, we'll pick our object, we'll create a Bill Gates. And it wants like a position in the world. Um, I want to spawn it at a random position. Uh, so how do we do random? Um, well, there's this find expressions thing that'll help us do it. We could just search. Another thing that's really a, an important part of being a programmer is searching for things. So I, I could search for construct three random. And I will see that you can just type random. So for my x, I'll just type random. And I say from 0 to, let's say, 400, 500. And random 0 to 500. How did I come up with these numbers? I don't know. I just guessed. <laughs> right? Again, like that's part of being a, a programmer is you just, you know, you try things. And everyone who's going through this workshop, by the way, you are now a programmer. Like, we're making games, but we're also, we are actually coding, right? It's not super fancy coding, and, and if you don't enjoy the coding part of things, this is perfectly fine to just end your coding journey here and be like, I'm going to be great at Construct or whatever other tool is like it. You don't have to get into, like, machine learning and whatever else, right? Like, I, I, for me, at least, the reason I like coding things is just to be able to make cool stuff, and that's, this is all you need to know to make cool stuff, but anyway. So we tried this thing, you know, which is just we'll try the number. This is <laughs> this is a very interesting situation, right? I think if I remove the chairs entirely, so I'll just go ahead and if I delete it, uh, yeah, okay, it does not remove it. So now they won't restart the game because he's no longer touching the chair, and okay, so this is. <laughs> This is kind of an interesting thing that we've got going on here, right? And we could see that um, 500 is maybe a little bit small because it wasn't going very far. So we could try 1,000 and 1,000. And we'll just, you know, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's certainly, it's certainly something. Um, I think that this is this uh, kind of reminds me of the uh, you know the like Bob Ross style of painting where it's like there there's you know there's only happy accidents, um, and uh, I think that that that's kind of the way that I treat game development as well. Sometimes you make a mistake and it just turns into a you know a cool game of its own. Um, same you know same deal. So what if we want to do the same thing like but what if we want to make this really hard? This is like Bill Gates' nightmare, right? So I'm going to do chairs. Now we're just spawning nothing but chairs constantly everywhere. Okay, well the game doesn't last for very long because it, you know, it it actually like it's uh you know, like the chairs are just 
touching Bill Gates and he's immediately dying. Uh, so, you know, maybe we want to make it a little bit slower. Every tick is too fast. So we'll, we'll try to find something else. So I deleted that. I double clicked to get a new one. And we'll, we'll go back to the system. And we'll see if there's a way to do a, a timer that's a little bit slower. So rather than as fast as possible, a little bit slower. And we scroll down here and we see every X seconds. Now again, you know, you pick the wrong thing, that's totally fine. You just go back, you just change it until until you get what you want. And if you really can't figure it out, you Google it or you ask a mentor or um, someone in help desk. But in this case, you know, I'm gonna pick a time, let's say uh, one second sounds reasonable, honestly. So we'll leave it there. And, and let's try it now. So now we've got these chairs that are just spawning everywhere. Now, this is not, first of all, they're really big. Um, this is like a weird construct thing. If you don't have any of them on, on the map, it'll just like put them at whatever size. But if you put one of them on the map and just like make it really small, all of the other ones I think will also be that small. Yeah, so there we go. I, I don't know why Construct does it that way. It kind of makes sense, but it is weird. So anyway. Um, OK, so we've got our, our small chair now. Um, we want it to fall. Uh, you know, we, we want it to like fall down from the sky because that, that sounds like a way to make this a little bit more fun. So how would we do that? Is that a common thing in video games? Well, yes, it, it is, right? It's Having things fall is, is pretty common. Uh, we usually call that physics. So I'm going to go into this this right click and, and edit behaviors, which is the place we go for all of the things that let us be lazy. I'm going to scroll in here and look at what looks right. And we don't want it to be platform, because platform lets us control it with the keyboard. Physics object is probably the right way to go, right? Um, because if it's a physics object, like it's going to be affected by gravity. Um, and again, you know, I'm, I'm partially just guessing here, so if that didn't work, like, I would just try something else, but I think I've done this workshop enough times to know that it should. So, okay, now we have Bill Gates, and we have a uh, second Bill Gates, um, and we have a bunch of tiny chairs raining from the sky that we're trying to dodge. Um, and this is actually going a little bit slow. The other thing is there... I feel like they should all come from the sky instead of like starting, you know, midway through. So instead of um, instead of choosing random, I think Y is the up down, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, in this game, so I'm gonna just try. We'll try zero. If that doesn't work, we'll try a really big number. Um, but we'll try zero for now, and I'll try changing this uh, one second. 0 0.2 and we'll see if this works cool so now okay so maybe that's a little bit fast but you get the you get the picture like this this kind of works um, and and we can you know we can go ahead and, and tweak it we'll try 0 0.5 um, here's an idea uh, what if it's every 0 0.5 seconds so it's not that long but then every um, you know, we'll add a new event so that every five seconds we get a second Bill Gates to control. Um, so every five seconds, uh, system create object Bill Gates, and we'll just do I don't know, ten comma forty. I don't. Yeah, I'm just making up those numbers. And you know we'll. We'll do this in here, and in a few seconds I should... Okay, so I think my, my next Bill Gates spawn in. Let's get rid of the big one, so we'll only get small Bill Gateses now. So we got our initial, you know, our initial Bill Gates, and okay, now we got our second Bill Gates here. And this game is, like, getting harder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, well, two of them fell off the screen, so I guess that's a, that's a way to cheat at it. Um, you know, and maybe we could get rid of scroll two or something, but there we go. Like, you know, I've kind of made this game that like is, is actually, it's not terrible. Um, it's, it's probably not the next Flappy Bird, but, um, at the very least it's kind of funny. And, you know, maybe I, um, I bound things in so I can click and drag over here. Um, 
So we can do that. We'll give it some walls here. So there's our Bill Gates. Um, I'm gonna turn off the scroll too that we added at the beginning. Cool, and so now we have this like box where we're trying to avoid things. Okay, the second Bill Gates is getting stuck in there. So we'll, you know, again, we're just kind of trying things here. So we'll try 50 and maybe the Y should be 100. Um, and if that doesn't work, you know, we'll go back and try it again because that's kind of what it's about. So and now I got two Bill Gateses. This is getting a little bit more difficult. Yeah, and, and I, I think the you know, the chairs are actually spawning where the Bill Gates are. So there's there's room for improvement there, right, too. Um, so what are some other things we could do to make this more fun, you know, to, to kind of wrap things up here? Well, we could probably, um, you know, we could add more interesting mechanics like that. Maybe we could add some enemies. Um, in a workshop in the past, someone wanted me to have the chairs shoot other chairs, like at bull as bullets at Bill Gates. So like you have chairs shooting other chairs. Um, that's something you can certainly do. We could add a timer. Um, maybe you need to survive a certain amount of time in the level, or maybe you want to, um, you know, maybe you want to do something where it's like you are trying to survive as long as possible, right? Like a, again, like a Flappy Bird style thing. Um, you can add touch controls. This can actually export uh, iPhone and Android apps. Um, so you could add touch controls to this, make it an iPhone game, export it, stuff like that. Um, you could completely scrap this and go and build your own thing as well, right? Like you don't have to build a simple platforming game. I've seen people use this for really cool like RPG style games. Um, in fact, I think even on the start page, they have some examples of games that people have made. Um, and you know, you have everything from like these cool traditional platforming games to like dungeon exploring to um, space shooters. Um, there's, there's all sorts of things like that that, that you can do with this. Um, especially I think if you start getting into better art, um, maybe you find someone who's good at writing. Um, and I know that there have been some people in Build the Team that said that they were interested in doing art uh, or music or, or writing for games. Um, you know, you work with some of those people, you start to get something pretty cool. Um, so with that, I'm going to go to questions. Um, so someone had asked me how to copy the image without using copy and paste. So if you want to get an image into Construct, um, the way I like to do that is to use that open menu. So I'm going to give you an example of that. Um, let's say that you don't have someone who's who's good at art that you can work with. Um, one thing you can do is go to open game art, which is sort of like a collection of free game art. The quality is variable, um, but you know you can you can still find some things. We will find this terrible looking, terrifying looking box. Sorry, it's a it's a great look, great looking box, but it's also ter uh, terrifying. And we can go ahead and take our chair here, and I'll hit open, choose this, and then pick a crop. And now all of our chairs have actually been replaced with terrifying boxes. Uh, which probably makes this a more traditional game in some regards, right? Um, like this actually looks a lot more like a normal game. Um, we could probably change our player character as well. Um, so that's the way to get art into Construct. I don't know that there's a way to save art out. Does this work? Okay, there is. So if you want to get art out of Construct, um, you just want to hit this button. And it'll, yeah, uh, presumably it'll it'll download it. I don't I don't know what's going on, but um, you should be able to get it out that that way. The other thing you can do, by the way, is you can create animations. Um, I didn't really go into this, but you can actually do different frames um, down here on the bottom. You can do a bunch of different frames, and then you can create different animations, like one for walking, one for jumping, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, so yeah, that that's definitely an option as well. Um, there's a lot you can do there. Um, does anyone have any other questions about how to do things in Construct or uh, maybe other um, ideas for games that you might want to know just generally where to get started? Um, you know, if you if you know what you want to make, uh, any any questions about how you would do that? Do 
Joanna in the Discord chat is right. I have been running on very little else but Crush and Kit Kats and some tacos. All right, well, that is going to wrap it up for tonight. Um, I think that this is the last workshop of the day, um, but we have a lot of more stuff planned tomorrow. I'm also redoing this workshop at 11. Um, so if anyone is working on a game uh, and, you know, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern, um, which I think would be 8 a.m. Pacific, um, or what would that be, 13 GMT? Um, yeah, but yeah, if anyone's working on a project, wants some more help, feel free to drop into the, the next workshop. Um, or if you want any help in the meantime, uh, just post on Help Desk or in your um, mentor pod if you've already created a team, and we will get you going as well. Um, there's a lot of fun things you can do with Construct. I've seen a lot of really clever, uh, creative um, things. So I, I'm certainly really excited to see what people end up making. And uh, yeah, so hope to to see some cool things from you thank y'all for for joining me for this one good night good night everyone